So the danger signs in pregnancy let you know that something is wrong. These are not normal. Sudden abdominal pain. So that's when this patient needs an assessment, you would go get the registered nurse. And abrupt flow of vaginal fluid. What could that vaginal fluid be? Amniotic fluid, right? What's the difference between amniotic fluid and urine? How would you know if a woman says, I'm leaking fluid? The, the color, also the pH, okay? That's what they do, they test the pH of it. So abrupt flow of vaginal fluid, good job, bud. Vaginal bleeding, we would not expect to have that uh, during pregnancy. And puffiness in the face and in the hand. The feet, we kind of expect a little edema, a little pedo edema, but when that swelling begins in the face and in the hand, what is that possibly? Preeclampsia, yeah. So we don't want to see, uh, if a woman says, I can't wear my wedding band anymore, or if her face feels puffy. We're going to talk about preeclampsia too, because that's a common complication. So if any of the danger signs are ever pregnant, we never assess a woman vaginally, all right? The physician does that. So the nurses, we won't do anything vaginally. All right. Um, Let's just talk about this. I don't, you don't have a specific section for it, but I want, I think you have no space for it, maybe on the other page or one page. Make no room for this, because I heard y'all talking about it yesterday. So um, the RH immunoglobulin is also called Rogam. I don't know if that's how you guys are studying it, but this is very important and significant because it is given so the mother uh, essentially won't die or her baby won't die. Um, so you give you give the RH immunoglobulin. Remember, we got to remember the generic names. We give this when the mother is RH negative and the baby is RH positive. Okay. A question that NCLEX might ask you is: Do you give it to? Do you give the RH immunoglobulin to the father? That's a no. We never give anything to the father. He's not our patient, and we don't give this to the baby. Okay. It's only given to the mother. So we gotta know when it's given. It's given at 28 weeks and also within 72 hours of delivery. And the way you guys would give this would be an IM injection. Okay. Any questions about this? Did you learn this in school already? What would happen if you give this to a mother who is RH positive? Oh, no. Yeah, so what happened is her blood would hypercoagulate. What does that mean? Massive blood clots everywhere, okay? She probably would not make it. So this is very important for you know for your boards. When to give it, who to give it to, all right? Let me know when you're ready. All right, we're gonna talk about the complications of labor. I'm only gonna focus on two. We're gonna do preterm labor first. Preterm labor is any labor before 37 weeks. So if a mother starts having that abdominal pain, she's bleeding vaginally, do we want her to have the baby? No. So we need to give her some medications that will stop preterm labor. All right. So the first medication is called terbutaline. And remember, I told you guys I want you to study pharmacology where it matters. So terbutaline is a medication for preterm labor, and you need to watch for tachycardia. Okay, tachycardia. You guys know it's an increased heart rate in the mother and in the baby. Another medication we can give for preterm labor is magnesium sulfate, right? Magnesium sulfate is a central nervous system depressant. So it makes everything go down. 
So if the woman is having contractions, that magnesium sulfate is going to relax the body, tell it to chill out, but magnesium sulfate has toxic effects, right? So the three things you wanna watch for um, with max sulfate is number one, it decreases respirations because it's that central nervous system depressant. So it's gonna drop your patient's respirations um, less than 12, all right? That could be a problem. Also, it's gonna decrease urine output. And normal urine output is about 30 milliliters an hour. So if we give a pregnant woman magnesium sulfate, what do we want to do to monitor her urine? What does she need? A catheter. We want to put a catheter in her because we want to see how much urine she's putting out. Okay, does that make sense? Good. All right, and also um, magnesium sulfate decreases deep tendon reflexes. Deep tendon reflexes. So the normal magnesium I have here, the value is 1.6 to 2.6. So make sure you know all of your laboratory values as well. Okay. So those are the three things to watch for if you give magnesium sulfate and you know what Tempudoline does now. Okay, um, also I think I added, so I added two more, right? <laughs> so um, Ritodrin, that's also a preterm labor medication and you wanna watch for Tachycardia, hypokalemia, hyperglycemia. So not as popular because you do have to monitor for more things if you give it for preterm labor. So tachycardia, what's hypokalemia? What does that mean? Low potassium. Low potassium and then hyperglycemia. We talked about that yesterday. Yeah. Nifedipine is a cardiac medication, right? So if you study your cardiac medications, this can also be given as a treatment for preterm labor. But because it works specifically on the heart, you're going to have effects of hypotension and um, hypoxemia. So the better time is very popular on the maternity floor. Okay, that's the first pregnancy complication, preterm labor. You guys know how to address it. The second one is preeclampsia. Preeclampsia. This is that hypertension seen specifically in pregnancy. So the mother will not have this problem anytime before um, this issue and usually it resolves once the baby is delivered. So hypertensive state seen in pregnancy is preeclampsia. So what, what else is going on? What are the characteristics of it? There's three defining characteristics of preeclampsia. The first one is of course hypertension. The second is proteinuria. What's proteinuria mean? Protein in the urine. How much, how much protein are we supposed to have in our urine normally? None, none. So anytime a patient has protein in their urine, something's wrong, okay? The urine is supposed to be free of protein, free of white blood cells, free of bacteria. Remember, the urine is sterile. It's supposed to be clean. So we have protein urea here. And also that edema that I talked about. So the puffiness in the face and in the hand. So what are the risk factors in general? Young mothers, older mothers, Also, um, obesity, DM, diabetes mellitus. African Americans typically um, have this issue over other races. And then um, a mother who's had multiple children, multiple gestation. So if it's your third time being pregnant or your fourth time. 
So this sets up for preeclampsia. All right. The biggest complication with preeclampsia, and this is considered the medical emergency, and this is health syndrome. Have you guys heard of this before? Yeah. Yes. So this, uh, some people think this is a variation of preeclampsia that's worse because you have all the symptoms of preeclampsia, but now you have hemolysis. You have your elevated liver enzymes and you have low platelets. And you guys know how I love um, just how much you can learn just from the name of something. So if we just go over the name, then you won't have to study this condition again. So health syndrome, what does hemolysis mean? Destruction of blood cells, so what is that gonna make the patient? A patient who has hemolysis, what kind of condition is this? Anemia, very good, yes. This is considered a microangiovascular anemia. You don't even know that, but that's what this is. It's anemia. Elevated liver enzymes means organ failure, okay? And then low platelets means what? What is this patient gonna be at risk for? Bleeding, bleeding, massive bleeding, um, more specifically because of pregnancy, placental um, abruption, right? So the placenta can detach and the patient can bleed out. Health syndrome is very serious, it is very serious. So what's the treatment for this? I don't have it up here, what's the treatment? The mother's pregnant, she begins to have preeclampsia, it turns into health syndrome. What do we need to do? Deliver the baby. We need to get the baby out, all right? Um, also, if doctors don't know what to do with some things, they'll put the patient on steroids, okay? So steroids, deliver the baby for this. Also, if a patient is anemic, what do we do for anemic patients? Blood transfusions. Okay. All right. We're doing deep studying today, deep critical thinking. I want you guys to know it above just the surface level. I want you to be able to talk about it. Okay. All right, so what do we do for the preeclampsia? Our nursing interventions, these are nursing interventions. So we put this patient on bed rest. I think this goes in the box, yeah. Put this patient on bed rest. The pregnancy position is always the left side line. You cannot go wrong if you say, I'm gonna put the patient on the left side. That is always something we can do. It's gonna help oxygenate the baby. It's the best position. We're gonna do a low salt, Diet, why do we do a low salt diet here? Because of the hypertension, yes. Low salt, low protein. We don't want protein in the, in the body because sometimes that's hard to break down. And high fiber, what's the high fiber for? Why do we need a high fiber diet for this patient? Constipation, because they're on bed rest, they're not moving around. And then we monitor, we monitor for eclampsia. What's the difference between preeclampsia and eclampsia? Seizures. seizures. Yes, so we do seizure precautions. I'm not going to put that down, you guys. No seizures. Seizure precautions. Okay. But the only treatment for this is to deliver the baby. We want to get that baby out so the mother can live. Because the longer the baby stays in, it puts the mother at risk for organ failure, health syndrome bleeding, DIC, those things we don't want to deal with, okay? So we have this woman, she needs to have her baby delivered, so we are now going to go into the stages of labor, all right? So let's talk about labor. Labor is the onset of regular contractions that increase in frequency, strength, and duration. Okay. So the contractions are regular, they're coming regular, 
They're getting stronger. They're getting longer. You guys know. You want to help labor along if you want to get started. What do we give? Oxytocin. Yes. So we know when to give it oxytocin, pitocin, but we also need to know when it should be turned off. And it should be turned off when the contractions are two to three minutes apart. Okay. And they're about 60 seconds long. They last about 60 seconds. labor is broken down it's broken down into four stages so the first stage of labor also has four parts to it so for the first stage of labor you have your pre-labor okay and this is just the days before labor begins when the mother is excited she's cleaning and she's prepping um, she's ready to go this is called pre-labor all I want you to know for the other stages is basically how much the cervix is dilated that's what you need to know for the exam. So for early labor, you have a cervical opening of zero to four centimeters. Active labor, five to seven centimeters. And then transition is important because